the military industrial complex. The disastrous rise of misplaced power. Hey, I'll Scott Horton here. I'd like for you to said. read this book, The War State by Michael Swanson. America's always gone to war a lot, though in older times it would disarm for a bit between each one. But in World War II, the U.S. built a military and intelligence apparatus so large, it ended up reducing the former constitutional government to an almost ceremonial role and converting our economy into an engine of destruction. In The War State, Michael Swanson does a great job telling the sordid history of the rise of this national security state, relying on important first-hand source material, but writing for you and me. Find out how Presidents Truman, Eisenhower, and Kennedy all alternately empowered and fought to control this imperial beast, and how the USA has gotten to where it is today. Corrupt, bankrupt, soaked in blood, despised by the world. The War State by Michael Swanson. Available at Amazon.com and at Audible.com. Or just click the logo in the right-hand margin at ScottHorton.org. We should take nothing for granted. All right, you guys, welcome back to the show. I'm Scott Horton. This is my show, The Scott Horton Show. My website is ScottHorton.org. Keep all my interviews there. Uh, more than 3,000 of them now. Going back to right around this time, 2003, uh, there at ScottHorton.org. You can follow me on Twitter, at Scott Horton Show. And introducing Jonathan Landay, he's the top dog over there at McClatchy Newspapers. That's McClatchyDC.com. Uh, if you'd listened, he could have truthed you out of war with Iraq back in 2002, and he's been doing great journalism uh, on the national security beat all over the place and on torture and many other things ever since. Welcome back to the show, Jonathan. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. I'm just fine. Uh, good, good. Very happy to have you back on the show here. A uh, lot of great journalism out of you guys on the uh, torture beat, especially here, uh, and the CIA beat, I guess, uh, on this issue in general. Uh, first of all, uh, very important uh, piece out here. I, I believe this is the latest, uh, where you talk about 20 major findings. Now, from what I understand, the way I read through between the lines here, didn't sound like you've actually read the summary, but you've been talking to people who have. Is that right? No, we got uh, the, 20, sorry, the 20 conclusions of the report. There are mm -hmm. 20 bulleted conclusions, uh, and we got them. Oh, you got the, the list of the 20. All right. Well, so let's go ahead and go through it then. Have at it. Okay, um, so uh, the one we focused on, because a lot of them are known, you know, the, the sweeping ones are known because committee members have talked about them before, and, and, and that is the basic finding that uh, the use of what uh, the CIA called and the Bush administration called uh, EITs or um, uh, EITs, uh, the no uh, enhanced interrogation, enhanced interrogation techniques. techniques. Thank you very much. Sure, Sorry about sure. that. Um, the fact is that the, 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 we've been told by the committee members that the report, four years, $40 million, uh, 6.3 million pages of classified documents found that uh, the EITs, enhanced interrogation techniques, uh, did not uh, produce, uh, or produce very little intelligence of any value, and that the CIA uh, misled the Congress, the Bush White House, and the American public on uh, just how effective these were in, in producing intelligence. Mm -hmm. uh, so some of that stuff is already known. Um, but what we focused on in the latest story was a finding that, that appears uh, to challenge the key defense uh, uh, on which the CIA and the Bush administration relied, the, the, the key legal defense on which they uh, relied in arguing that uh, the use of the EITs did not constitute torture. Uh, and this was a uh, a finding that said that the CIA, well, let me re read it to you verbatim, quote, the CIA repeatedly provided inaccurate information to the Department of Justice, impeding a proper legal analysis of the CIA's detention and, re and interrogation program, unquote. Uh, and that's kind of a pretty devastating finding in that uh, the Department of Justice, uh, a particular office there called the 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 Office of Legal Counsel, mm -hmm. was the office that produced the legal opinions that said uh, that these EITs, these 10 uh, uh, harsh interrogation me measures, which included waterboarding, did not constitute torture. Uh, and uh, this seems to pull the rug out from under that. Uh, and that's because, it seems, uh, that uh, those opinions that were produced by the Justice Department were based on uh, quote-unquote facts about 
uh, the program that were given to the Department of Justice by the CIA itself. And so if those facts were wrong, uh, then that raises serious questions about uh, the veracity or, or of, of these legal opinions. And indeed, um, the legal opinions themselves, in the, in the legal opinions themselves, which have been declassified, the Justice Department, in fact, says that. It says uh, that uh, uh, we uh, understand that these are the facts that you have given us, i.e., the CIA has given, has given to the, uh, the Justice Department. But if any of these facts turn out to uh, change, then that could undermine the whole, uh, it could undermine uh, this legal opinion. And so that seems to be where the report is, has gone. Well, yeah, no, that's uh, extremely important. So in the bullet points here at McClatchyDC.com, you talk about how they uh, evaded uh, and impeded oversight from the White House and from the Senate, uh, which we can get into that. But most importantly, if I understand you right, what you're saying is that in the original John U. memos, which purport to legalize and and cover these CIA men for whatever crimes that they commit by purportedly, you know, legalizing them within their threshold of uh, organ failure pain or whatever, as they define it, um, that the CIA was providing such faulty information to the Department of Justice that it's even, as you say, in their memos, it says if this information isn't right, this memo can't cover you. So even if you buy the legal theory that this memo could cover torture, then uh, now that is terribly undermined, too. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm, 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 my, my desk is awfully messy with lots of this stuff, and I'm trying, but I'm trying to find um, one of the, um, the opinions uh, so that I can read that precise language. Um, and unfortunately, I think I, I lent it to a colleague, uh, the one I wanted to, the one I wanted to, um, to read to you. But yes, essentially what, what the, what the Justice Department itself put in these memos to then, uh, uh, to the then, the CIA's then Senior Deputy General Counsel, John Rizzo, mm -hmm. was basically, our, our opinions are based on quote-unquote facts that you yourself have given us. And uh, we understand that you have no other facts at your disposal, uh, but if you do, uh, that could uh, alter uh, this opinion. Mm -hmm. yes. and, then, and I guess we already know, but now it's been reaffirmed that they were already torturing Abu Zubaydah and others, uh, question no, mark? No, no, no. What we, we don't, I, that I don't know about Abu Zubaydah, but we do know that before they, that they had been using, um, uh, they had been subjecting uh, detainees to uh, some kind to, to harsh interrogation techniques uh, before they went to the Justice Department to say uh, is what we're doing legal, um, and and that may be exactly why they went to the Justice Department because someone said, um, "Hey guys, uh, we're doing this stuff, and do we know that this is legal? Oh well, we better go to the Justice Department to get them to weigh in on this." Um, the reason I I, I couched my language the way I did was because the first legal opinion um, uh, was issued in, I believe, August of 2002, um, and, and it was seeking the Justice Department's uh, legal approval to use the enhanced interrogation techniques on Abu Zubaydah, who underwent them later, in that, year, later that year. Mm -hmm. But um, it's been established uh, that, in fact, other detainees, and perhaps he was one of them, uh, did under were subjected to unauthorized uh, or uh, unapproved uh, uh, interrogation techniques prior to the CIA going to the Office of Legal Counsel and asking for uh, the legal, uh, Office of Legal Counsel's advice, legal advice on the use of of these interrogation techniques. Mm -hmm. And do legal experts that you talk to does anybody question whether these memos can actually legalize crimes like torture in the first place? I, well, you know, the, the, the human rights community has been uh, up in arms over these memos for ever since they were declassified or ever, ever since they were reported in the press, um, uh, raising serious questions about or raised, saying that they seriously question uh, the, the legal analysis. And indeed, uh, the Justice Department itself, I believe, and I'm, again, I'm shuffling through the papers on my desk, issued a, a, an opinion, I think it was in... Uh, yeah, here it is. I've got it right here. It's a memorandum for the Attorney General, uh, June 11, 2009, 
uh, saying withdrawal of Office of Legal Counsel opinion, where uh, they actually uh, withdraw uh, one of the legal one of the legal opinions uh, that was issued by uh, the Department of Justice um, in this case, and uh, and um, yeah, so so yeah, so the the the, the Justice Department itself withdrew a whole series of these legal opinions that were being uh, that basically legalized the use of these of waterboarding and other techniques that many people consider torture. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I've spoken for years with the other Scott Horton, and he was the former chair of the New York Bar Association's mm-hmm. committees on international rights and uh, uh, human rights and on international law, both mm-hmm. different committees there. I just combined the two into one somehow. But uh, anyway, so he is a real expert on this, and he's been all along comparing these lawyers here to mob lawyers who the Justice Department uh, is happy to put in prison on a regular basis for helping the mob get around the law. That's not legal representation, and it and uh, I'm just a lawyer here is no defense. They'll lock you in prison if you try that. If yeah, well, I, I can't speak. Yeah, I can't speak for for the people who put these memos together. I can only report what it is that I'm that we're being told right. or we're being leaked. Right. Right. But I just wanted to point out that I didn't want it to 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 leave it where it sounds like, well, you know, they were torturing the guy before the memo, so that's the scandal. When really the memos shouldn't matter either way, uh, yeah, because exactly. it's always a crime to torture somebody. But I understand you're only reporting the facts here. I just want to make sure that you know that was in there somewhere. So now on the um, on the White House oversight, uh, can you be any more specific about what they weren't telling the White House? I, I I simply cannot, um, and and whether or not, and I suspect we're going to get that uh, once uh, the executive branch, or what we would hope we would get that, once the executive branch completes um, the declass, what's so called the declassification review of uh, the report's uh, 480 page executive summary and the findings uh, under that underpin the conclusions. Uh, those are undergoing uh, declassification review now. Uh, we're not sure when that's going to be finished. Uh, Diane Feinstein, the uh, chairwoman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, said that she would like to have had it done by, I think it's like early next month, but uh, whether or not that actually happens is, is, is in question. So no, um, it's hard to say what they're referring to. Because uh, I myself written, uh, wrote a story back in 2009 uh, about how uh, interrogators were under pressure from uh, the White House and uh, others to uh, use aggressive interrogation methods uh, to try and uh, obtain intelligence linking al-Qaeda and 9-11 with Saddam Hussein. Uh, because the White House, uh, the Bush administration, was desperate to uh, to do that, so that to justify the invasion of Iraq, and of course it never did because that link never existed. Uh, but uh, it could be that um, that 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 this finding has something to do with that. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's that's a very interesting point. Of course, that was on my list. Uh, for uh, subjects to get to here, um, I was thinking of the ABC report about how all the principals were there, at least for a time, everybody except the president, but the entire National Security Cabinet and the head of the CIA and the vice president and uh, the attorney general, they were all there while the CIA was torturing uh, Katani, I believe it was, down at Guantanamo Bay. And then, of course, there was the the famous quote of of John Ashcroft saying, "Why are we doing this and meeting like this in the White House? History is not going to look kindly on this." And so, and that made it sound like it was all a very, very top down project, at least for a while there before they passed it off to their deputies. No, yeah, but no, I think that's absolutely right. Um, and so, yeah, that that would be it'd be really interesting to see what if and and and, and perhaps what they're referring to is is. Uh, Another finding, uh, which is the main finding, which is that the use of these methods um, to obtain intelligence, uh, in fact, produce very little valuable intelligence, 
And perhaps what this means is that uh, the CIA was misrepresenting the effectiveness of uh, these methods to the White House uh, in order to continue using them uh, in the belief that they would produce at some point the intelligence that the White House was looking for. Uh, it's just something we're going to have to wait and see uh, the report once it's issued, or what we're going to see of the report once it's issued, will we'll illuminate us a bit on. Mm-hmm. And now, um, regarding your uh, previous article that you referred to there about uh, the torture and the Iraq connection there, um, mm-hmm. if anybody wants to Google it up, it's Abusive Tactics Used to Seek Iraq Al-Qaeda Link. At That's McClatchyDC.com right. by Jonathan S. Lande, uh, April 21st, 2009. Mm-hmm. And so the first person that comes to mind here is, uh, and I haven't reread this one in a while. In fact, I just Googled it back up. But uh, the, the first person that comes to mind would be uh, a guy named Al Libby. And uh, he was the guy that had implicated Saddam in teaching the Al Qaeda guys in airplane hijacking and. Uh, chemical weapons manufacturer mm-hmm. under torture in Egypt. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I believe that. Uh, I don't know if it was in Egypt. I think it may have actually even been in Libya. I'm not sure. Mm. Uh, it's, I'm having to dredge up because I think that uh, I, I don't remember, and perhaps, Scott, you can correct me on this, but I do know that wasn't there one of the detainees who eventually quote unquote committed suicide? That was him, yeah. That was him. And wasn't that in Libya? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, but I yeah. guess. See, I don't have a footnote for this, so I'm sorry. I, I it better may very be well sure. But I, because... I was under the impression that he had he was in Egypt, tortured there, and then was turned over to Gaddafi. That's very possible. And then Gaddafi might as well have tortured him more, and then eventually murdered him. It sounded like, but um... that may that may very well have been the case um, because it's, you know there's so much of this stuff to remember. I got to admit that I'm having a hard time remembering the exact details of I that know, case. But you. yes, <laughs> but what we did learn. What we did learn was that, that he, he, he told his interrogators this stuff to stop the abuse. Um, and it turned out to be wrong. And by the way, did your sources ever make it clear whether that was really their purpose was, we know it ain't true, but just beat it out of somebody. We don't want no, to make it I, out no, of they, whole they cloth. Never, never, so. No, they were convinced that it was true. They were, let's not forget, they were, this began... Before the Bush administration, this began with um, uh, a book that was written by an author named Lori Milroy, mm-hmm. uh, in which she basically proposed the preposterous idea that Saddam was behind the first World Trade Center um, attack. Uh, and that book was received, I believe the forward was written by James Woolsey, who was on uh, the Bush administration's defense um, the advisory board is it's, it's a, a, an outside advisory board, along with uh, Richard Pearl, uh, and and uh, these were some of the main um, advocates uh, of the idea that Saddam was behind 9/11, and and so that's kind of where this came from. This is the genesis of this idea, uh, which they went on to promote rather aggressively after 9/11. Uh, both within the government, you had uh, Wolfowitz. Um, I think it was Wolfowitz who wrote the. Uh, I think it was Wolfowitz who wrote the, the intro or 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 uh, uh, to Laurie Milroy's book. It's either him or I can't remember because I don't have it here. Uh, or or Woolsey. But nevertheless, these were all people who believed uh, that uh, that Saddam had to have been behind 9/11 because uh, no uh, no no terrorist group was capable of doing such a thing without state support. And that's where this they sort of convinced themselves of this and then went out to try and find that intelligence. And don't forget, they set up their own um, a parallel uh, intelligence system because they didn't trust the CIA or the DIA. Um, and, and they had uh, this effort centered in the office of, uh, of uh, former... Um, Under Secretary of Defense Douglas Fife, um, and uh, in in the office of what's known as the Office of Special Plans, and uh, they thought they had found this evidence or this intelligence that the CIA had missed, and they produced their own uh, intelligence report, uh, which turned out to be bogus. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, no, they 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 didn't know it was wrong. They actually thought it was right. 
And it was just a question of having to get the intelligence to confirm what they believed. Mm -hmm. And then I think you say in this report, too, if I remember it right, that this there was a real uptick. And it wasn't just all Libby. There were others, too. And, and they just the torturees figured out real quick. The victims figured out real quick. These guys want to hear something about Iraq. I better come up with something. And that, and I think you say that there was a real uptick in this right before the invasion and right after it, because if we don't have any warehouses full of VX, we better have something here. Well, uh, you know, I, I, I don't recall that, but I do. But, but, but look, um, this interrogation began, these, these interrogations God, I began. I hope I got that right. I'm sorry if I didn't. That's, that's quite all right. But, I mean, you know, this stuff began uh, uh, after the invasion of Afghanistan and continued uh, right through 2006. So we know that at least as far as 2006, this was, this was one of the, the main things that they were trying to obtain, issues they were trying to confirm through intelligence, uh, quote-unquote intelligence, uh, which didn't exist. And let's not forget, um, the CIA was very quick to tell the uh, Bush administration uh, that it had no intelligence. There was no intelligence uh, linking Saddam with al-Qaeda, uh, almost immediately after uh, uh, the World Trade Center attack and the attack on the Pentagon, they, they were asked to go back and look at this, and I believe they produced at least three, if not more, major reports, which said, no, um, the, the, there is no intelligence that uh, implicating Saddam uh, with, with, uh, uh, or showing that Saddam has been cooperating with al-Qaeda. Uh, and that intelligence, the Bush administration chose to ignore, uh, and at the same time, chose to accept the CIA analysis that Saddam Hussein was reconstituting his weapons of mass destruction, and hence we get the cherry-picking of intelligence by the Bush administration. Mm -hmm. Now, um, there are two guys uh, mentioned in your most recent report here who were killed in uh uh, CIA custody during a regime of enhanced this or that, whatever they call it. Uh, Gol Rahman uh, was uh, basically died of hypothermia at the salt pit in Afghanistan. And uh, he's the same guy that we've known about for a long time, yes. right? Or is yes. this a different guy? No, that no, it's to the same guy. There? Same guy. Okay. Anyway, and, and, and I believe someone, you know, a contractor was... Con uh, no, that was another case. I don't know that anyone... Uh, that, there, there, was, there was another case involving the death of a guy in, in Asadabad. Uh, another part of Afghanistan um, that a CIA contractor, I believe, was convicted of. Uh, but but this case, no, I know this was the hypothermia case where a guy was drenched in water and, and left to freeze and died of hypothermia. I don't think anybody ever um, there was any ever prosecution. There was an investigation. Let's not forget that the that the uh, after the destruction of the videotapes of Abu Zubaydah's interrogation. Uh, the uh, Obama administration appointed a special prosecutor to look at that, and the special prosecutor um, also uh, Dunham, I think his name was, or Durham, um, looked at at alleged uh, at, at, at detainee cases and ended up investigating two. And I believe uh, 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 Gul Rahman was one of the two, but no charges were ever produced. No, there was never any any the cases. Both investigations were dropped. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the. Uh, I don't know how to say it. Is it Manadal Al Jamadi? He was the guy that was crucified uh, to death and suffocated to death, basically by his uh, the way he was hung from the ceiling in the Abu Ghraib prison, right? Um, you, know, you know, you're going somewhere which, which, where 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 I I cannot. Uh, that's not something that I I can talk about because I'm not familiar with that. Oh, I'm sorry. I uh, that's quite all right. Uh, because I was thinking he's the he's the. I believe he's the corpse that everybody's posing in the pictures with their thumbs up and everything, and that right. Um, he was. I, I thought you know. I'm, I don't want to really opine on that because my 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 recollection is pretty hazy of that. Okay. But I re, I, re, I recall that he was dropped off. Um, it was either by the. I don't, I just don't want to go there. I don't. Okay. I don't. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Because what I was wondering was whether were these the two that the the investigation. Uh, picked up on that you just talked about. I don't think so. I think one was Gul Rama, and, and I forget who the other one was. Okay. Well, and, then, and I think uh, that's right, though. But I think you're right. I do believe you're right. And now, I mean, and the reason I'm getting to that is because uh, you talk about in your reporting about the discrepancy in the numbers here. And I talked with Jason Leopold yesterday, and some of his sources were telling him that 
uh, there was a discrepancy, and some of these people are missing. They've been turned over to, uh, presumably, they were turned over alive to Egypt or or Syria or somewhere else, and were never seen again. And I and guess not I accounted just wonder- for. Yeah, I don't know. Um, you know, the thing is, and let me admit that I wasn't here last week. I was on my first vacation in more than a year. And so I wasn't involved in the reporting on that particular aspect of, of this story. But I do know um, that, you know, there, I do know that there was a dispute uh, uh, over the numbers um, uh, as the investigation, as the Senate investigation proceeded. And, but I, and I know myself that I've, I've reported on one case where um, a um, uh, Egyptian cleric who lived in um, uh, in Milan was uh, abducted, rendered in the official term mm-hmm. uh, by the CIA and taken to to Egypt, where he claims he was he was tortured uh, and then never charged with anything. And that and and, and I've reported on how. Uh, and this was from a, a former CIA uh, uh, covert officer with knowledge of this case, um, how they ginned up the case against him in order to justify the rendition. And it turned out that, they, that the Egyptians never ha- didn't have anything on him. And while he may have been an, an inflammatory, radical preacher, he, there, were no, there was no solid uh, uh, intelligence or evidence linking him to any particular, any, any terrorist act. Uh, this is a guy by the name of Abu Omar. Um, so he was one of them. I'm sure he's one of the, the, the 26, I believe, who uh, are in, identified in the report as, as being detained uh, in violation of whatever legal principles uh, were established for the, for, the, for, for the CIA detention program. Mm-hmm. And then uh, lastly here, real quick, uh, is it a big problem, do you think, that the CIA gets to take the black magic marker to this uh, summary report before it gets released, or is most of the truth going to come out of it anyway? It's hard to say. You know, there's a dispute going on. Uh, Feinstein has, Senator Feinstein has said that she wants the White House to lead the declassification process. Uh, I don't know what the, what's going on with that. There's a, a letter that's been issued today by Senator Mark Udall, who's also a member of the Intelligence Committee, has been pretty outspoken on this stuff, who also says that the CIA should not uh, uh, that, that he says that the White House should limit the CIA's involvement in the declassification process. And let's face it, I mean, there, you know, some people could make a, a, a conflict of interest case where you have the agency that's the subject of this report uh, determining what uh, or what not the public should see. Yeah, you might think. <laughs> Oh, well, I mean, it's not like any of them are going to be held accountable anyway, so I don't know what they're worried about, but okay. Um, oh, and I'm sorry, one more thing here real quick. Um, can you uh, give us an update on the status of, Is are there two different Justice Department investigations, one into the Senate Intelligence Committee staff and one into the CIA at the same time for the same um, problem? We know that the CIA asked the Justice Department to launch an investigation into uh, the alleged unauthorized removal of classified material by the Senate committee staff from the secret uh, facility uh, set up by the CIA where they did most of a lot of their research, where they were the only place where they were allowed to look at um, the documents they used as their source documents for their report. Um, but that referral, and that referral went to the Justice Department, it's called a a criminal referral, and that the Justice Department has, in fact, uh, asked the FBI to investigate. That referral, however, went from the CIA after the CIA's own Inspector General's office asked the Justice Department to launch a criminal investigation into uh, the alleged monitoring of the uh, committee staff's computers in that secret facility by the CIA. Now, as far as we know, The FBI has not begun an investigation into that allegation. Uh, But at this point, yes, there are two uh, criminal referrals over at the Justice Department, one of which is being acted on. All right. Well, thanks very much for your time. It's uh, great to talk to you, Jonathan. Sure. I appreciate it. Everybody, that is Jonathan Landay. He is a national security beat reporter for McClatchy Newspapers. That's McClatchy, D.C., 
dot com, and they've got some great stories along these lines uh, lately. Uh, the torture report and the controversy between the CIA and the Senate there at McClatchy, D.C. in their national security section. Go check them out. Now we're late for the news, so we'll be right back after this. Hey, I'll Scott here. First, I want to take a second to thank all the show's listeners, sponsors, and supporters for helping make this show what it is. I literally couldn't do it without you. And now I want to tell you about the newest way to help support the show. Whenever you shop at Amazon.com, stop by ScottHorton.org first and just click the Amazon logo on the right side of the page. That way, the show will get a kickback from Amazon's end of the sale. It won't cost you an extra cent. And it's not just books. Amazon.com sells just about everything in the world except cars, I think. So whatever you need, they've got it. Just click the Amazon logo on the right side of the page at ScottHorton.org or go to ScottHorton.org slash Amazon. Hey, y'all, Scott Horton here for CashIntoCoins.com. So you want to buy some Bitcoins? CashIntoCoins.com makes it fast, easy, and safe to get Bitcoins. Just deposit the money into their account at any of the major banks they support, and then just email them a picture of the receipt in your Bitcoin address, and you get your Bitcoins. Almost always the same day it clears. In a tough, competitive new market, CashIntoCoins.com has the advantage. A great system and great customer service to keep you coming back. That's CashIntoCoins.com. Just click the link in the right margin at ScottHorton.org. So you're a libertarian, and you don't believe the propaganda about government awesomeness you were subjected to in fourth grade. You want real history and economics. Well, learn in your car from professors you can trust with Tom Woods's Liberty Classroom. And if you join through the Liberty Classroom link at scotthorton.org, we'll make a donation to support The Scott Horton Show. Liberty Classroom, the history and economics they didn't teach you. You hate government? One of them libertarian types? Or maybe you just can't stand the president, gun grabbers, or warmongers? Me too. That's why I invented LibertyStickers.com. Well, Rick owns it now, and I didn't make up all of them, but still, if you're driving around and want to tell everyone else how wrong their politics are, there's only one place to go. LibertyStickers.com has got your bumper covered. Left, right, libertarian, empire, police, state, founders, quote, central banking. Yes, bumper stickers about central banking. Lots of them. And, well, everything that matters. LibertyStickers.com. Everyone else's stickers suck. 